Hello and welcome to this video. So the next part of this course is going to be devoted into making a live web-based dashboard that can show the patterns and indicators that we've been creating in the previous few videos. To make a start with this, I'm on my GitHub repo here. You can find a link below the video, of course. There's a folder called web dash start. If you click on there, you can see there's a web dash start.zip. You need to click on that and then click the download button and save it and extract it anywhere you like on your computer. Please make sure that you extract the zip folder and work from the extracted folder. Um, I do a lot of teaching in real life and I'm always amazed by the amount of people that A, don't know how to extract a zip, I'll assume you do, and B, insist on working from inside a zip file. This won't work properly, so please extract the zip file. So once you've extracted the zip file, please then open a console and navigate to the folder. In my case, I'm on this e teaching new forex bot web dash and web dash starter. So I'll just delete the line that's here and type ls to list the files. I think it's on the Windows console, you type dir. And you can see here that I've got the files that are inside the package and I'm not inside the zip. The first thing you'll need to do in here is make a virtual environment. You can see that I've already created one and it's active because I've got the VNV in brackets here and you can see the listing above, I've got the VNV folder here. In case you've forgotten how to do that, although I assume you're fairly familiar by now, it's python-mvnvn will make you the virtual environment folder. And then you should type vm scripts activate uh, to activate the virtual environment. That's on Windows. On the Mac or Linux, it's source space, then VN, bin, and activate. So once you've done that, we can go into visual code and have a look at some of the things that we have. So you can see here, I'm inside the folder, my virtual environment folders here, and I want to just explain a little bit of the other files that we have in there. We'll start with this requirements.txt. So in the previous videos on the course, we installed packages using pip, typing pip install the name of the package. When you've got lots of packages to install, there's a more convenient way of doing this with pip, and that's to put all of the packages in a file. It's usually called requirements.txt. Just list the names of the packages. You can also list the version numbers if you want to as well to be very specific. So you always reuse the same packages. In this case, I haven't done that. I've just listed the names. But what we can do is we can install all of these in one go using pip. So to install all of these packages, you need to type pip install dash r and then requirements.txt and hit enter. Now, mine will say it's all satisfied already because I've already done the installation. But what you should see is it runs through the process of installing all of those packages that are declared inside the requirements.txt. So once you've done that, we can take a little look at the code that we have inside here. So the first one is the Oanda API.py. I'll be very familiar with to you. It's uh, basically a slimmed down version of the Oanda API we've used in the course so far. Defs.py is exactly the same as we've used in the course so far. And the interesting part is this dataprep.py. So this contains more or less all of the code that you've already written out inside notebooks. And that's why I've provided this package so you don't have to type all of this out again. There's just a couple of little new things inside here. So at the top, we've got a list of all the major currency pairs coupled with each other that we've used in previous simulations. And we're going to make our dash show all of the indicators every five minute candle using all of these currency pairs. We've then got some columns that we want to show on our dash. So we'll use these to extract the information from a data frame. And now we've got some familiar code here. So we've got the various constants, then we've got our top end, bottom end distance, the hammer, the spinning top, the engulfing, the apply stats function, the apply patterns function. And then we've got a couple of new things. We've got an is cross. We use that to identify whether there's been an MACD cross and which direction. We have an is trend, which you'll see used below. I added something in, basically adding three EMAs, a short, medium, and long, and seeing if they're in a particular order so we can identify an upward or downward trend. And then we have this get Bollinger Band signal. I can't remember whether we use this. I think we did use this in a notebook before just to see whether a candle has closed outside the upper or lower band. Then we have a Bollinger Bands function. So it's familiar. We take a data frame and we calculate all the information for the Bollinger Bands. And then we have our MACD function where we use that cross to identify whether we have an MACD cross or not. And then this is new, the apply trend, but really it does nothing that you haven't seen before. We're applying an exponential moving average of eight periods, 20 periods and 50 periods, and then asking if these give an indication of a particular trend direction or not. So the first sort of new code that you haven't seen, but you've seen something very similar before, is to get the actual data for a particular pair in question. So let's say it's the Euro US dollar. We take in an API object we've already created, and then we use the API to fetch our candles at a granularity of M5. The data frame that comes back, we add on a column with the pair name. That's just a little bit of convenience for later on. And then assuming that we've got everything we need from the API, we create our MACD, our Bollinger Bands, our stats, our patterns, our trends, get rid of anything with an NA, 
then strip it down for the columns that we want and then return the last row of the data frame for that particular pair. We then have a prepare data function which is the main entry point of the script and in this we create the OANDA API, make ourselves a list of our data and then loop through each of the pairs, get the last row of the data frame with all the statistics. If it's not none then we'll append it to our data and then we make a data frame by concatenating all of the last rows of all of the pairs. Now we're going to send our information to the web app in what's something that's known as JSON format, it's very very similar to a dictionary and to do that we're going to need to be able to convert our date object into an actual string. So here we're converting each of the time entries in our data frame into a string and then last but not least we convert it into a JSON object and we return this JSON object from the prepare data function. Whenever we run this script you'll see in the if name equals main that what we do is we open a file in, called data.json inside the static directory which just has the index.html at the moment and we write the data that we return from prepare data into there. And that's something I'd like to very very quickly test now. Before I do that I just want to add a tiny little bit of code onto the final underscore df here. So I'm going to type comma and indent is equal to two. That just makes it look a little bit easier for us to read. So back in the console then, I'll just clear this out. I'm going to type Python, make sure your virtual environment is accurate, and then dataprep.py. And we can see here that I'm getting the last 100 candles at M5 for all of the pairs we're interested in, and the script has executed. So back in Visual Studio Code, inside the static folder, you should have a data.json. You can see we have a list of objects, and these objects are the rows that were in the data frame. So we have each pair that we were looking at, then we have the time and the various characteristics or the KPIs, the indicators and things that we're interested in looking at for each pair. So the remaining files inside the project then, one of them app.py, this contains a Flask application. Flask is a very popular web framework in Python, it's used usually for APIs, it's also used to serve websites and that's what we'll be using for our app. I'll explain later on when we come to use it exactly how it works. And then we have this .env file which is just some environment variables for Flask. So that's it for this video. Hopefully you've created your virtual environment, installed all of the packages and been able to run the dataprep.py and we're ready to start creating the web dashboard. So thanks very much for watching and see you in the next video.